Hey, so before the video starts, there's a couple of things that I want to say. It feels weird just posting my regular content without addressing everything that's happening in the world because there's a lot of things happening, there's a lot of bad things happening, and I just wanted to talk about it here. I've been very vocal about it on my Instagram, but I know not all of you have an Instagram or not a lot of you follow me on Instagram, so I thought I should put this here too. There's a lot of things that we're fighting for that we should have had a long time ago. So on my Instagram, I made a post about the whole Black Lives Matter movement, and I, I'll put a screenshot of it up here if you want to read exactly what I said, but basically I can't speak for the black community, but I want all of my followers to know across all of my platforms that I support you and I love and care about all of you regardless of your race, the color of your skin, your sexuality, anything. I just want everyone to know that my channel will forever and always be a safe space for you. I've also been sharing petitions on my Instagram, I've been signing petitions, I've been sharing tips for protesters, and just doing everything that I can. I've completely grew this platform on accident, but I feel like now that I have it, the best thing that I can do is to let everybody know that they're loved and to kind of fight for what I believe in and for the things I believe people should have. And in this case, it's basic human rights, which is crazy to think that we don't have already. I'll also leave some links at the top of the description box for anyone who wants to sign petitions or donate. There isn't a lot I can do, but I really want to do what I can. I'm kind of on that topic considering all of the chaos that's going on right now. It feels weird to be posting the type of content that I normally post because there's a big part of me that thinks that the focus should be on other things and I should let people focus on other things. But then on the other hand, there's also a part of me that thinks that like while I am doing everything that I can, there's a lot of things that I can't do and for the things that I can't do, I feel like I should make up for it by just carrying on as normal and provide a little bit of normalcy for you guys because there is a lot that I can't do and so I think that whenever there is something I can't do, the best thing that I can do is to keep things happy and lighthearted. And I know that a lot of people, even outside of following the Black Lives Movement and supporting that, a lot of people come to my channel to kind of escape from the negativity in their lives and so I think that I should carry on doing that as well as supporting the movement. And I just wanted to talk about that because it seems very ingenuous to just continue posting without addressing it on here, so I just wanted to talk about that really quickly. It's important to fight for what we believe in and it's important to let our anger out and you should be angry by the things that are going on, but I also think that we can't let that consume all of us because having so much anger all of the time just isn't healthy. And so whenever you're taking a break, feel free to just let yourself smile and enjoy the smaller things in life. Anyways, sorry for all of this right in the beginning of the video, but, but thank you for listening. And again, I'll be leaving links at the top of the description for anybody who wants to help. And if you are going to unsubscribe or unfollow because of this, good. Because if you don't support just basic human rights, then bye. Anyway, thank you for listening to this. I am going to be a lot more active and continuing to post about this on Instagram just because it's easier to share information over there than it is on here. Do what you can and I hope that you enjoy this video and I love you all. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. So today's video is just going to be a little bit different. I really enjoy content where it's just like art in the background and then people are talking about whatever art related or not. And I really want to start doing that sort of content. I asked you guys over on Instagram quite a while now actually. And something that was suggested repeatedly without fail was how not to hate your art. Now there's a lot of reasons why artists might hate their art, but today I wanted to focus on one specific topic and that's social media. Because I have a lot to say about social media and how it affects artists' self-esteem. It definitely affects your self-esteem esteem in non-art related ways and there are also other contributing factors to why an artist's self-esteem might be low and why they might not feel confident in their abilities. So let me know if you want me to talk about those things in the future but for now I just wanted to talk about social media specifically and how that can negatively impact artists. I also think it's an important thing for me to talk about because I do have an audience and I have an audience comprised Compo comprised? Composed. I have an audience that has some pretty young people in it and so I think that I should set an example and try to kind of lift those people up because I'm- it, it's weird that social media is my job now because it took me a while to even get into social media. Most people are, have social media now when they're 12 years old which is crazy because I didn't make my first social media accounts until I was like 16 <laughs> and even then it took me a while to even really get into posting. So I have been drawing all of my life and for most of my life I've been pretty confident in my art skills. 
I've definitely, like, I've always acknowledged the fact that, like, I'm not the most talented artist and I'm not the best artist by any means, but I was always confident in my abilities and I was always really proud of the stuff that I was making. Ever since I was little, I have been drawing basically since I was old enough to hold a pencil. People ask me how long I've been drawing or if there's an age when I really started taking it seriously. And the answer is no. I kind of art has always just been a part of my life. I'm sure a lot of artists can relate to this part. Being an artist is hard <laughs> and like people think that drawing is so cool and it's so fun but then also at the same time it can be pretty discouraged. Even my art teachers would say like I can't have a career in art because it's hard which is true and I think that there is some truth to that and there is something to be said about that but I think that we really need to stop talking about how it's impossible to get an, a job in art and how we need to have a fallback. This is turning into a different discussion. Let me get back to my point. <laughs> but it was just, I was never around artistic people really because before my younger sister was born, I was the only one in my family who really drew. And even then my sister didn't start drawing until she was just a little bit older. But I didn't really have a whole lot of, I had a few friends who enjoyed drawing, but I didn't really find those sorts of people until high school. And so I was kind of always just in my own little bubble just a drawing, but I had no idea that there was a whole community of artists just online. <laughs> and I remember when I first found it, I was so excited because it's crazy. <laughs> Even here on YouTube, there's a huge art community here on YouTube, but I had no idea about it. I didn't make any sense. I had no idea that it existed. And I've always wanted to make YouTube videos ever since I was younger, even not art related videos, even before I knew that it could be a job, just when I knew it was a thing that people did. I really enjoyed watching it and I really wanted to make them. And then when the time did come where I was finally able to make YouTube videos, I had already found the whole art community on the internet so I knew I wanted to have a channel that was at least primarily dedicated to art. But kind of right before and I guess a little bit after I started my YouTube channel, I noticed that there's a little bit of a shift in how I felt about my art. So like I said, it's something that I was always very confident in. It was always something I was very happy to share with people. I was always really excited to show people my art and to talk about my art, whether it was like kids at school or people in my family or whatever. I've also really liked creating art for people. It was just something that I was always passionate about. And so then when I found the art community on social media, of course, that is something that would call to me because that's literally what social media is about. It's about sharing things with people. But then it was not too long after I started posting on social media, I felt kind of crappy about my art. I feel like in terms of social media, there are two main reasons that an artist might not be happy with their skill level or the things that they're posting. The first one would be comparing your skill level to other artists' skill level. And then the second one, is the likes and the follows and the numbers that come along with that. So I guess I'll talk about the first one first, which is comparing yourself to others. And I guess this is the first thing that I kind of fell into when I started posting my art online and when I started discovering the art community. Now there are a lot of talented artists online and there are a lot of artists that even to this day, I still look up to, but it is so easy to look at their art and say like, I'll never be as good as them or oh my God, I wish I could draw as nice as you. And I get a lot of comments like that too. I know a lot of them are very well intended and I can really appreciate that. But it's always like, I've noticed that a lot of them, like a lot of people praising my art in the comments, don't compliment my art unless they're tearing their art down. And that's really upsetting because I am a person who loves to share my art and I'm also a person who loves to encourage other people to create. I've seen a lot of people get frustrated with their art, hate their art, even give up on art. And it's really sad, especially because I know how important art is to me and I can imagine how important it was to them. And then they just drop it because they think that they're not good enough and they think that they have to be good enough, quote unquote good enough. And they think that they have to be a certain way and do certain things. and. It's not true, <laughs> and I really hate seeing that. I think another topic sort of related to this, which I'm not going to get really into because it's a whole other bag of worms I don't want to touch. Bag of worms? Can of worms? It's a whole other topic. <laughs> and it's just the topic of like, do you get art skills by practicing or is this something that you're born with? Spoiler alert, it's practice. <laughs> no one is born being able to do anything other than breathe. But I think that that's another thing, like I just think I said that was rude. So oh, so it's Kyle! Kyle, okay. I'm so proud of Kyle. Please. <laughs> Art is a hobby where it just takes so damn long to get right. 
And even then, like, what even is getting it right? And that's something that a lot of people forget when they look at the artists that they like and admire. Like, a lot of people think that I'm an incredible artist. Some people say that, like, I'm the best artist ever, but there are still things that I can improve on and things that I'm trying to improve on. There is no perfection, and I think that's something that a lot of people forget when it comes to art, and I think a lot of people forget how long it took those artists to get to where they are. So if we take me, for example, I am 20 years old. I have been drawing for a majority of my life, so I have years of experience with art. Over a decade of experience with art. And if you are 15 and just started drawing, drawing a year ago, of course you're not going to have as much experience with art. And so technically speaking, I might be at a higher level than you, but guess what? Not only does it just take a lot of practice, but there are also people that have a technical level that is higher than mine. But that's the issue. I shouldn't even have to say that. It shouldn't be about technical levels of... <sighs> I think a lot of people think they have to create the best art ever, and a lot of people think that everything that they draw has to be a masterpiece. And I remember when I first started looking at social media, that was the only point in my life where I started getting discouraged by my art. And let me say that again, the only time in my life where I was unhappy with my art was when I started posting on social media. I kind of had to take a step back and kind of remember, like, hey, it shouldn't matter what happened to the person who loved your art, because they're not here anymore. <laughs> so eventually I kind of just had to, like, remind myself that the art that they make, like, yeah, I can never make that art because I'm not them. But also on the flip side of that, kind of of the same, the other side of the coin, something. What's the phrase? There's a phrase that goes here, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> on the flip side, like the art that I make, they can never make because they're not me. I think people need to stop thinking in terms of making the best art and making the best art that they can. And again, that's not to say every piece that you make has to be a masterpiece. But I am saying comparing yourself to other artists can be really toxic. And even now, even now that I've gotten out of that mindset, there are still artists that I look up to and there are artists that I admire. And that's not something that you should let go of. It's really just the thought that your art needs to look like that or it has to look like that in order for you to be a good artist. And for those artists that you look up to, you don't see the hours of work. Like even the drawings that you're seeing in this, I drew the things off camera, I lined them off camera, and it took me two days to paint all of them. But really, you guys are just seeing it in a sped up video that I post in a day, and then you guys are probably going to move on to watch other videos. And that's fine, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you need to acknowledge all of the hours that go behind it, because it's so easy to watch yourself work on a piece for hours and then look on social media and think that they did that in a few minutes, because most of the time that is not true at all. I don't know, I think this is kind of rambly. Can you tell I don't have a solid script? <laughs> but my point is, you just, can't focus on making the best art, Make the just make the best art for you. And the best art that you can make is going to be different from the best art I can make, and the best art I can make is going to be different from the next, from the, from the best art someone else can make, and that's totally fine. Now, I know saying to stop comparing yourself to others is a much easier thing to say than it is to do, and I know that because I was there. And I guess to an extent, I'm still not completely out of it, but it's something that I've definitely gotten a lot better with. There's a difference between admiring another person's work for what it is and bringing your own art down to praise their work. And that's what's really upsetting. And it is definitely something that takes a lot of work to change, but I think it's one of the most important things to change. So the second thing I mentioned, the likes and the follows, that's also really stressful. <laughs> now, when I first started posting to social media, it was never something I particularly I don't want to say that I didn't care about, but it's something that I didn't really have high hopes for because, again, I was always very disconnected from social media for a long time. I was very new to it. I had very low expectations, if I'm being honest. And I think a lot of people kind of- I think social media really makes people forget why they're drawing and who they're drawing for because even though I love to share my art with people and I love to share my stories with people, at the end of the day, I'm doing it for me. It's because it's something that I enjoy. I like to make art that I enjoy. I like to write stories that I enjoy. And I feel like a lot of people forget that. A lot of people tend to make things that they think will do well in the social media world. And I think a lot of people are trying to like, quote unquote, make it in the social media world. And I get a lot of questions about people starting a YouTube channel or a lot of people wanting to start an art account and how to grow that. The truth is, I don't know <laughs> because I did this on accident. If there's one piece of advice that I could give, 
regarding that topic, it would be remember why you're drawing. Because when I started posting to social media and when I started posting to YouTube, of course I wanted people to see it because that's the point of social media, but I didn't care if it was two people or 2,000 people or 20,000 people because I just wanted to share my art and I enjoyed making art. And at the end of the day, that is why I did that. And then people happened to come. I feel like people have a misconception of like what being a fairly large presence on social media means. And I am by no means like a big YouTuber. <laughs> But like, I feel like people still just think it's something that it's really not. Like, this is my full-time job, I'm definitely not rolling in cash. <laughs> I don't know, you can't be in it for the followers, you can't be in it for the money, you can't be in it for the likes, because it's, it's, it's not that easy. <laughs> and a lot of the times you are going to be disappointed by a lot of those things. I don't want to say this to discourage anybody from posting to social media, I just want to say this because it's the truth. If you are a person who gets discouraged by numbers, and by that, I mean like the likes that you get and the followers that you get, then don't post to social media. You're going to be discouraged in your art and you're going to think, well, what's wrong with my art? Why don't people like my art? But the thing is, it's not, that's not true. <laughs> it's just that the people who would like your art aren't seeing it. Now, I'm not a marketing expert. I can't give you great detailed advice on how to make that happen and how to get your art out there. All I can say is just, if you are planning on posting, make it for you. I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm rambling, I should have wrote out a better script but it's fine. <laughs> In conclusion, remember why you're making art. Remember why you love art. If there's anything that's on your social media, whether it's things that you've posted or people that you follow, just get those out of your life because it's not worth it. Just remember why you like drawing art. Remember why you want to share your art with people and just don't stress about all of that other stuff. Again, it's much easier said than done. It's not as simple as just one day waking up and viewing things differently. It is something that I would recommend every single person watching this video to try and work towards. And again, it's not a mindset that I'm completely out of, but it's something that I'm definitely getting better at. And another thing is that I don't want anyone to think that this is me discouraging them from posting to social media. I'm just saying, do it for the right reasons. If it's not making you happy, then don't do it. That's all I'm trying to say. Just don't give up on art. If you have anything to say about this topic, feel free to comment down below. I'll do my best to answer questions, respond to your comments, just do whatever I can because like I said, I'll have a lot of young people watching and I don't want them to feel like my art is the standard. I don't want them to feel like there is really a standard for art. I just want people to have fun with art again because I feel like that's something that social media makes us forget. Anyways, give this video a like if you liked it. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't write a proper script, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any other comments about social media and how it can affect artists, feel free to comment down below. And also, if you're new here, hi, I'm Oliver. I post a lot of art on social media, which is funny because I'm talking about how that can be a bad thing. But if you want to see my art, feel free to subscribe. I post a new video every Wednesday and then also additional bonus videos whenever I can. And you can also follow me on my social media. That will be on screen now and linked in the description box below. I would suggest following me on Instagram if you want to see more of my art because that is where I post my art, but if not, then whatever, it's no big deal. And there will also be some videos on screen now and linked in the iCard for you to check out if you want. Thank you so, so much for- bleh. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week. Bye.